So then guys, Samsung have recently just brought out their brand new Galaxy Book 5 Pro, and I've got one right here. And in fact, this is actually the 360 model that you can see right here, but the normal Pro model is very similar to this, apart from obviously you can't flip around the screen and things like that. But what I want to know is, is that with one of Samsung's best laptops out there, how does this compare with Apple right now? And especially if we pick two MacBooks that are a very similar kind of price range. So what we can see here with the Galaxy Book 5 Pro, obviously it's coming in at 1,449 US dollars. And obviously this has got the Ultra 7 Series 2 inside of it. Uh, we've got 16 gigabytes of RAM and we've also got 512 gigabytes of storage inside of this too. And then we have the baseline sort of MacBook Air. When I say baseline, I have upped it to 512 gigabytes of storage. Uh, yeah, you can correct me there that you can get 256. But the price you can see is 499 US dollars for this model. And then finally, what we have is the MacBook Pro. This is the 14 inch version. The standard one with 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage and everything like that. So with that, let's go into some of the nitty gritty bits and pieces and some differences we have here. So obviously we do have a MacBook Pro and we've got a MacBook Air. And this here is the M4 standard MacBook Pro, 14 inch one, the baseline model. And what we have here is the baseline model of the MacBook Air. And at the time of making this video, this only has an M3 inside of it. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM. We've also got 16 gigabytes of RAM. And inside of this here, what we actually have is the second generation Intel Ultra 7 and this is known as the 256V or 256V inside of it and just in case you want to know what the differences are with the CPU and cores and things like this let me show you this quickly in this chart. So as you can see right here at the top, we've got the Ultra 7, like I said, the 256V, and this is the Galaxy Book 5 Pro. This is the 16 inch model. And as you can see that this chip is actually made up of four efficiency cores and four performance cores. And then it also has the Intel Arc GPU inside of it too. And this actually has eight cores to make this up. Then moving over to the MacBook Air, this is the M3 version. And like I said, this is the full 16 gigabyte model. And what we have here is the full fat, the full version with all the cores in the M3. So this is the standard four efficiency cores, four performance cores, and also a 10 core GPU, not the bin GPU version. And then finally, we also have the M4 MacBook Pro, the 14.2 inch model, like I said. And this is made up of six efficiency cores or efficient cores, and it's got four performance cores, and also it's made up of a 10 core GPU cores too. So as I showed earlier, I picked, say, two MacBooks of a very similar sort of price range to this Samsung. But there are a few other features what this Samsung actually has over, say, the MacBooks. And one of them is staring you right in the face right now, and that is the AMOLED display. And this AMOLED display is definitely the best in the range out of these three laptops that we have right here. Like I said, it's got an OLED display, and if you've used an OLED display, you'll know it's far better than the mini LED that we have with the MacBook Pro and the standard LED retina display that we have, say, in the MacBook Air. It also goes up to 120 hertz, just like the mini LED that we've got in the MacBook Pro, but obviously the MacBook Air has only got a 60 hertz. Now, obviously a few other differences that we do have, say, a numpad on the keyboard, that's quite handy too. And then for ports wise, we have a USB 3.2, port was quite good to have. We've also got two Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 ports on the side what are really really good and that's exactly the same like we've got here except for we actually got three Thunderbolt 4 ports on the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air we've only got two. And then we've also got HDMI just like the MacBook Pro, but we do have a micro SD card slot compared to the standard SD card slot what we get with the MacBook Pro. But obviously the MacBook Air doesn't have any of those ports. All we've got is the MagSafe ports, so we're both on this, and then obviously the two USB-C ports, what are Thunderbolt 4 ports on here. But overall, really, the actual design is really, really sleek of the Samsung. And to be deadly honest, even if you can see it right here, this is probably definitely as thin as, say, a MacBook Air 
out there. It's definitely not as thick as I would say as a MacBook Pro. Well, that's really, really good to hear. But first of all, you probably want to know about battery life. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to charge up all of these laptops. That's 100%. And when we start the first test, that is when I'm going to disconnect the actual power supply. Now, just in case you want to know with the Samsung right here, I actually have changed the power options so we are going to get the full whack of the actual chip and all the power out of that it's not going to go into a special battery mode and you say 70 percent of the you know performance or 50 percent of the performance because it's on battery i've told it use everything that you've got because at the end of the day that's what the macbook pros do and the macbook air does you know when you disconnect the power it doesn't actually throttle down those cpus or gpus it actually uses the exact same amount of power whether you are on the actual power supply or not now i know there is that turbo kind of mode but obviously i haven't switched that on on the macbook pro on the m4 to be honest i don't think it's even available on the m4 it's definitely not available on the m3 so really that's the best i can do to make this test fair so first of all what i've done is then let's get started then with the battery test like i said Said, disconnected the power supplies and the first test I want to show you is all to do with Geekbench. So with Geekbench 6 single and multi-core CPU scores, you can see them right here. So the Ultra 7, what's inside of that Samsung? Well, you can see the single core score only got 2,702. And to be honest, this is kind of speeds that are very similar to say the M2 kind of series. That's what that kind of got in single core performance. And you can see here then in multi-core performance, it got 11,103. But then comparing it to the M3 and the M4, you can see that both of them are way ahead here maybe not as much maybe with the m3 in multi-core performance but definitely in single core performance you can see it is definitely ahead there but obviously the m4 it does also have those two extra efficiency cores so you do have to remember that and this remember this is a total of multi-core performance all the cores all working together and that's why we have a score 15,288 that is why that is so much more powerful there but you can actually see then obviously just for just doing a single game Geekbench sort of scoring right here that obviously it does come out in front that the Apple M3 and the M4 is better than the Ultra 7 second generation. Now Geekbench doesn't always give the best results so I've done another benchmark here and what I've done is I've decided to run Cinebench 2024 and let me show you the scores here. Well, sad to say, it is very similar to what we got with Geekbench. That with single core score, we got 118, 138, and 175. So, you know, we can see again that the Ultra 7 is behind here. But then in multi core performance, though, again, the Ultra 7 and the M3 are close. But obviously, the M3 just pulls ahead enough there. But there again, like I said, with the M4 with the 10 core multi core setup, you know, that's 975. It is really, really pulling ahead here. So we're doing those two benchmarks for the CPU. Well, you know, I think we can say that Apple have won this round. And do remember, at the time making this video, we do not have the M4 MacBook Air at this point. And when that does come around, I don't expect Apple to kind of increase the prices of the 15 and the 13 inch MacBook Air. So this kind of performance you're seeing, what we're getting in the MacBook Pro with the M4 standard, it's gonna be very similar. That's if you get the same chip with the same amount of cores. But moving on, let's have a look then at G GPU. And what I've decided to do next of all is 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Test. Let's have a look then to see what the results gave us here. So after this test completing, we can see with the Ultra 7 with that eight core setup, we only got a score of 5,259. What I must admit is quite disappointing. Now the M3 in the GPU does have a 10 core setup for that GPU. And so with that, we got a score of 8,264. You can see we've jumped way ahead there over the Ultra 7. And then the M4 with the 10 core setup, well, we've got 8,994. Obviously, a little bit more of an improvement over the M3 because it's got the same amount of cores and obviously the next generation but you know comparing that to say the Ultra you know 7 we are like about 40% more faster here in doing this test here what is unbelievable to be honest. So those results are quite crazy on some of the sort of most casual kind of sort of benchmarking tools out there. Now I am going to be doing more tests obviously because benchmarking doesn't mean everything. But one other thing I am going to do quickly now is one other sort of benchmark out there is to actually see how fast the actual drives are inside of these. Well, quite surprising, as you can see here, Samsung is way out in front. We actually scored almost a 5,000 megabit sort of speed there. What's well, absolutely 
crazy uh, for the read speeds, and then it was 4,281 for the write. But then you can see the difference here that obviously with the M3 and also the M4, that the M3 is definitely slower in its write speeds, but the actual read speeds for the M4 and the M3 are very similar. The M4 just pulling ahead a bit more, but the write speed in the M4 MacBook Pro is definitely ahead, and most likely so because obviously it is a Pro machine, so you're more likely going to be writing things to the disk than I would say to a sort of MacBook Air. Um, obviously, now you will be writing stuff to the MacBook Air sort of drive, but obviously it's not going to be full on kind of 8K kind of projects with videos and things like this. So that's why the kind of sort of the M4 MacBook Pro does have a disk this fast inside of it. But the interesting thing is, like I said, is that the Samsung has pulled ahead here. Now I did just talk about doing casual things like on your laptops. And one of the most casual things I would actually say is browsing the web. So the best thing I can do right here is doing a web speedometer 3.0 test on all three of these machines. And let's have a look at the results right here. Now remember, the higher the score, it is better. Now with the Ultra 7, it scored 28. With the M3, with the eight core CPU, it scored 38. And then with the M4, with that 10 core inside of it, it actually scored 49. So yeah, definitely the apples here, as it were, with the M3 and the M4 are way ahead here on doing this test. Now, something else what I did mention about earlier was saying doing 8K sort of video rendering and things like this, that you'd probably maybe pick out, say, a MacBook Pro. But let's say if we ran Adobe Premiere, what can run on all three of these machines right here, and if we did an export of a 4K 10 minute video in Hevec to see what we'd actually get. Well, I've got the results for you right here. What is actually quite surprising is actually the Ultra 7 managed to export this file in 227 seconds. This is using the Intel Arc uh, GPU inside of it. The M3, you know, this is with the MacBook Air, did it in 269 seconds, whereas the M4 MacBook Pro did this in 238 seconds. And I think this really proves the point that running benchmark tools doesn't really show you the full picture for everything. So yeah, this is definitely quite interesting to see that the actual Samsung did actually manage to export this file quicker if you're doing something professional with it. So yeah, that is really, really interesting. So moving on then from this, what about gaming? If we did gaming on these three machines, what kind of performance are we gonna gain out of this? Now do remember that MacBooks are really not I would say designed for games. They can run games and obviously Apple are trying their best to get more into that market. But obviously, you know, ideally a lot of people would say you should be running on Windows and even a few of you guys even say you should be running on Linux now for games. But the main point is, let's do a comparison. And first of all, let's do a game that runs on Rosetta 2 on these MacBooks here and is native to Windows. And that is Rise of the Tomb Raider. So let's have a look. So what we've got here as our results are the frames per second if we've got a setting set at high by 1920 by 1200 resolution. And you can see here with the Ultra 7 Arc that we actually got 53 frames per second on average with this. This was using the benchmarking kind of tool. With the M3, we actually got 39 frames per second. And then with the normal M4, we actually got 46 frames per second. Now, some of you guys may complain, well, that's using Rosetta 2. So let's use something what's actually built for the actual Apple Silicon from the ground up, as it were, being converted for that. And that is Resident Evil 4. Let's have a look then at the frames per second that we got right here. So this is playing the game at balance at 1080p and the frames per second we got here was with the Ultra 7, the Arc GPU, we got 51 frames per second, but with the M3 we got 39 frames per second and then with the M4 we actually got 48 frames per second. The Definitely the Intel Ultra 7 is definitely pulling ahead here. But then after this, what I decided to do was run two more games, and this is using Crossover. Crossover allows you to you run Windows games on a Mac, and it's compatible with a lot of games out there, including Cyberpunk 2077. Let's have a look then to see what the score we got right here. 
So again, running at 1080p on low and this is using AMD's FSR 3.0, the Ultra 7, this got actually 46 frames per second with this, whereas the M3 got 35 frames per second, and then the M4 got 49 frames per second. Remember, this is at low settings, and then obviously this is using FSR 3.0 and at 1080p. And then after this, I decided to run the classic of GTA 5, did a benchmark on this, and let's have a look at the average sort of frames per second we got right here. So we can see with the Ultra 7 with that Arc GPU, we got 115 frames per second. Remember, this is an eight core GPU inside of this Arc GPU sort of part of the actual chip there. And then obviously the M3 has a 10 core GPU and that got 92 frames per second. And then the M4 with its 10 core got 107 frames per second. But like I said, do remember that these Apple machines, they're using crossover, it's not native, so obviously there's a lot of sort of reworking going on there, but it is interesting to see how close I would actually say the M4 is to the likes of say the Ultra 7, what is actually running this game natively. Now, after running all of these tests, I know what you're going to be asking, what about battery life? What did we have as an end result on all three of these laptops? Well, I've got the results for you in percentage right here. After running all of these tests, you can see with the Galaxy Book 5 Pro, we actually got 61% battery left on this. The MacBook Air 15.6 inch, the M3 had 58% battery left. That's very, very close. And then the MacBook Pro 14 inch M4 had 72% battery left. And as we know, we've talked about in the past, the M4 is super efficient and super powerful. It's definitely a big generation leap over say the M3 with its battery life. Now I know the MacBook Pro does have a slightly bigger battery inside of it too, what does help, but to be honest, compared to the MacBook Air, there's not that much in it. So for this to get even more battery out of it, that is super, super impressive. That mini LED display is also helping out, I'm sure too. And this was really, really great to see the differences here. So in conclusion then, have Apple failed here? Well, I think we get the answer, no, they haven't. But it is nice to know that there is definitely another option out there. Remember, when we did do that benchmark, when we exported that video, this did come out in front. And do remember that the actual storage inside of this is faster, the screen is definitely the best out of this, and yet it does sit in a price sort of tag, what sits kind of between both of these models that we've got right here. So definitely it is a great option out there. And back battery life on this too was really, really great. And I'm not saying also that the Ultra 7 is slow whatsoever. What you got to remember that this would beat out say an M1 and probably come ties or maybe slightly outbeat an M2. And a lot of you guys own those kind of Macs out there right now. And you will be telling me they are not slow whatsoever. So this is definitely a great machine to still even consider in 2025. But as you saw here, we're doing the comparison between both these machines. Definitely the Mac but Pro and the MacBook Air overall did come out in France. But with that, guys, what are your thoughts on these three machines? And which one would you pick? Well, let me know in the comments below. And also on that note as well, guys, it's time to wrap up the video too. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. Also, if you want to hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.